All right, guys, we're back. Uh, it's part three of the toxicology series. Let's talk about some caustic substances, and we'll we'll get into the um, um, uh, psychiatric meds. And this one, I, I want to make sure that we pay really close attention on. And the reason is because uh, they love to give this one as a scenario for your integrated out of hospital experience. Okay. I've seen the caustics, and I've seen the uh, tricyclic antidepressant overdoses. Let's make sure we know our stuff on this. All right. So caustic substances are or alkalis. Again, the strong ones actually burn on contact, destroys the mouth, the lips, the esophagus, the entireties of the, the esophageal. And yes, the strong acids is a pH that's less than 2. Uh, our plumbing liquids, uh, yeah, they, these are all strong alkalis. Uh, again, they produce immediate and severe pain, and uh, they cause tissue coagulation and necrosis. They kill it, it glumps it together, okay? So you might even have a, a burn, uh, the burn site where you've got scarring that already starts with that. Okay, immediately de or delayed hemorrhages can occur, and again, if it's absorbed into the vascular system, and uh, it will cause a lot of, uh, it will cause serious acidemia. It will, it will send their pH uh, down to the bottom. So again, strong alkalis, again, these are your Drano's, your liquid plumbers, and uh, again, it liquefies, it just sloughs the skin off when you get this on there, okay? So the, again, how do we, again, uh, liquid alkalis are more likely to actually injure the stomach? The good news is there's a lot of acid in there to kind of sort of start to counteract it. The problem is, is that uh, you usually have a... Uh, you, you lose your you, two to three days later is when you completely lose the ability to produce any more acid because of that. Okay. So how do we treat that? Again, what, what are we looking for first and foremost? Again, usually the burns around the wrist, the, the strider, the hoarseness, uh, uncontrolled bleeding, uh, and then vomiting. So, and again, uh, you, you, you got to figure out what it is exactly that they took. Uh, uh, again, injury to the oropharynx, larynx, larynx is usually makes the the airway a nightmare. So again, uh, you may actually have to crack these patients depending upon the type of burns that they've actually had. Now, hydrofluoric acid is extremely toxic, and it's used in a lot of industry. Um, it penetrates deep into the skin, and then it just kind of starts burning. Uh, basically, it, it loves calcium because, again, it starts to literally, it, it eats things off. If, if you're going to get rid of a body, hydrofluoric acid is probably going to be your method of choice. Uh, again, it's going to burn at the contact. And, again, usually you get the vapors that, that start burning the eyes at very, very low levels. Confusion, palpitation, and muscle cramps also occur with the hydrofluoric acid. This is an example of a very, very small burn to the left palm. And, and notice that there's a, the, the, the whiteness to the greenness to this, this swelling part. Uh, again, uh, and, and that's a very small exposure. And a remove exposure closure, and then thoroughly irrigate with water. Water, 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 lots of water, lots of water. Get more water on there. Flush it, flush it more, flush it. Again, immerse the affected limb in iced water. Again, if you've got mag sulfate, calcium salts, uh, 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 those are probably your best way to do that, and then transport immediately for definitive care. Your hydrocarbons, uh, these guys, your kerosenes, uh, gas, uh, lighter fluids, paint, glues, lubricants, solvents. And then usually you can absorb them, but again, you can inhale them, you can ingest them. Ugh. Again, yes, people do huff gas or, or worse yet, they try to swallow it. And again, uh, uh, foot and wrist drop, again, they usually have numbness and tingling, and they'll start to develop cardiac arrhythmias because of it. Uh, <clears throat> They will have burns due to the local contacts in some cases, okay? Usually, uh, 1% requires a, a actual physician intervention. So this is the one that they were huffing gas. They'll probably let them air out, and then they'll probably keep them there. Charcoal does not bind with hydrocarbons, by the way. So, uh, uh, well, I'm going to go in and lavage them. Uh, yeah, this is actually... So, but it's actually a good time, a good time for them to do that, okay? So, again, if you've got a hydrocarbon ingestion, getting them, uh, inducing them to throw up, again, or, or actually doing a gastric lavage on them. But it does need to be pretty quick when you do that, though. All right, here's the guys I want to make darn sure you know about. Again, it's a tricyclic antidepressants, okay? Uh, again, they, they have a very thin, narrow, 
uh, narrow therapeutic index. And the problem is, is that you give them not enough, they can have problems. You can give them too much, they can have problems, okay? And again, it, and the unfortunate thing is, is it's a psych drug, but we give them to people and then they overdose on it, okay? So again, all of these doxepin, uh, nortriptyline, amitriptyline, notice the leans on there. Uh, again, they're going to have dry mouth, they're going to be blurried vision, uh, they they're not going to be able to pee. Uh, they're gonna they ain't gonna be able to go to the bathroom. Uh, and then later in the overdose, that's when you get cardiac arrhythmias, and it's usually the widening of the QRS, uh, confusion, hallucinations. Uh, again, early in the overdose, that's not going to happen. Later in the overdose, with severe toxicity, that it is. So you need to uh, again. You know, make sure that we do your standard toxicological emergency. What do we mean by that is if we can get the pills out, let's get it. Let's let's add, let's give them uh, charcoal if if it's within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, again, if they, they have that ability. Uh, uh, and again, your cardiac monitor absolutely has to be put onto this patient because it's the arrhythmia, uh, again. And if it's a suspected mixed overdose, uh, make sure you do not use flumazenil or romazacol is the other name for it make sure that you don't use it okay um again by the way the other thing is is usually for your tricyclic antidepressants your 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 choice of of drug here is sodium bicarbonate because it causes a severe acidosis okay well when i say sodium bicarb you're usually giving uh two amps via uh, um two amps directly into the patient, and then two more amps uh, in a bag of 1,000 cc's of normal saline. So again, you, your medical control here is what, a matter of fact, most of them will say by medical control only or by poison control. Now, that's not the only psychoactive drug that they have out there. These are MAOIs, and they're used to treat depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. And again, it's it's got another ther a thin therapeutic index uh, and uh, serious interactions when you get foods that, that contain uh, triamine. Uh, and again, usually you have a high morbidity or mortality. So they'll tell you not to eat certain foods with that. Okay. Uh, they, they, the MAOI inhibitors inhibit the breakdown of the neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and dopamine, and that therefore they have more of these chemicals in the in the synaptic cleft to activate the functions of those. Okay, again, good thing, but it has some issues with it. Uh, the biggest thing here is is uh, they're going to have severe hypertension, uh, tachycardia. Okay, tachycardia, severe hypertension. Back with our tricyclic antidepressants, you're probably going to get your more bradycardic patients and, again, acidotic patients, okay? You're going to have widening of the QRS with the tricyclic antidepressants, okay? These guys here, again, usually, uh, the, the uh, uh, again, the problem is, is once this stuff gets into the system uh, and, again, they develop the hyperthermia, then they'll end up going bradycardic and then, then your hypotension will develop and then coma and then death. Again, and there's no antidote. Usually it's a supportive care to get these through if they start to seize. Uh, a benzodiazepine is your choice. And if you need vasopressors, you want to use norepi, okay? So if you start developing that severe hypotension, that's when you're going to use norepinephrine on these guys, okay? Um, now, again, your your newer antidepressants, by the way, uh, again, uh, these in your SSRIs, they, they reuptake serotonin in the brain. And the, the, they usually have less, um, it, less effect from those, okay? But it's not to say that they still can't have problems with that. Usually when they're taking an, uh, the, the newer antidepressants, the SSRIs, they're usually just going to be really sleepy and, and quiet. They can develop a little bit of tachycardia with that. They can't have some nausea vomiting. Um, again, uh, the problem with the SSRI is you start getting the, again, the mental status changes and they may get actually some extra pyramidal syndrome. Good news is, is that the extra pyramidal syndrome is kind of easy to fix. A little bit of Benadryl, uh, works very good for those. Uh, again, due to the excess stimulation, the serotonin receptors in the nervous system, that's why they're kind of, uh, they, they, they have these effects from that. Uh, again, usually there's very mild symptoms. Death, death is very, very uncommon with your SSRIs. Okay. Uh, 
But again, uh, severe symptoms can lead to hypertension and tachycardia, which can then lead to the shock. So again, these guys are going to get more tachycardic, kind of a lot more like your MAOIs, but they usually don't have the hard crash unless it's a very severe uh, overdose mentality. For your MAOIs, they can actually they can crash on you pretty readily. So again, um, the, the clinical triad of the abnormalities for that, by the way, is confusion, uh, just lack of lack of involvement uh and then hallucinations uh again uh agitation your coma and again hypertension and tachycardia for your ssris is the, again the big clue off to these guys uh the patient discontinues all serotonin drugs again uh, again these the problem is there is you get a rebound effect so you you definitely don't want to have that happen with your your ssris Lithium is used to treat the bipolar disorders, and then uh, the, uh, no other drug is more effective to treat those guys. But back to that thin, uh, narrow therapeutic index, and usually the uh, normal use, they can actually have a little bit of, of, of toxic uh, levels, actually. These guys are going to have the dry mouth. They're going to have the tremors, the twitching. There's going to be some confusion, nausea, vomiting. But and again, lithium causes bradycardia and arrhythmias to happen from the bradycardia. Heart blocks, kind of a big one with your lithium overdoses. Okay, uh, Activated charcoal will not bind with lithium, again, and it uh, should not be given. Uh, your salicylates, uh, these guys here, um, sorry guys, I'm sitting here kind of peeking at my notes here. But the, the salicylates is like your aspirin. Uh, oil of wintergreen, uh, those are the guys that we're talking about there. Uh, again, hyperthermia. They get really warm. It's kind of funny because we use it to treat fever and it will cause hyperthermia. Uh, again, confusion, lethargy, and again, profound acidosis is also one of those which just causes problems with it. Okay, uh, Again, generous uh, IV fluids uh, to help, uh, and it may require dialysis due to the damage that it can cause to the kidneys. The best way, flush this stuff out. Okay, Again, salicylate overdoses. Again, these are our Pepto-Bismols. Uh, add another one to this list, Aleve. Okay, so that one can be in there as well. Um, so again, can, by the way, you don't want to induce vomiting on these guys. It will only make things worse. Uh, put them on, put them on the monitor, gain your venous access, and transport and monitor these folks. Um, I've had the unfortunate displeasure of watching a young woman die from an acetaminophen overdose. Uh, it causes liver to shut down. It's extremely painful. Um, and again, a Doses of more than 150 milligrams per kilogram is considered toxic. Again, usually four, four for uh, even for smaller people. I was at one of the other videos earlier. I was joking about our 40 kilogram patient taking four. Again, it depends on how much they actually took. Okay, uh, this the problem is it usually goes in four stages. By the way, uh, the first uh, half hour to 24, they're gonna have a lot of nausea, vomiting, weakness. Then you're gonna have a lot of abdominal pain. The kidneys will begin to shut down. Your elevated liver enzymes is the the one to two day for stage two. Stage three is usually on days three and four where you have liver function disruption. And if you get them past stage three, then you'll have a gradual um, recovery or progressive liver failure from that. Uh, and again, it depends on how much the overdose and how much damage is done to the liver. And there is an ant uh, uh, antidote, which is your mucomist. Uh, uh, this guy, is, uh, it's highly effective, but it is very rarely if ever given in the pre-hospital setting okay however we get them there we can start administering the mucomist usually we can defer that uh the problem with the girl that i actually watched though is she downed um 400 um 400 500 milligram tablets so that was an extensive overdose and and it was uh the day one of my clinical rotation was in there. Day two, I got to really see the after effects, and it was not good. Okay. Now, uh, other other NSAIDs, by the way. Headache, nausea, ringing in the ears. That's also when them with the, um, the salicylate overdoses as well. Uh, again, mild drowsiness. Uh, you might get a little bit of rash or itching, actually, with that. Um, theophylline is uh, one they used to use with... Um, 
It belongs to the group of medicines, the Xantines. And uh, this is the one that they used to use a lot for asthma patients as a long-term control agent. Uh, but again, the, the tremors, seizures, cardiac arrhythmia, nausea, vomiting can happen with the theophylline overdose. And again, the problem is, though, is if you have a theophylline overdose, it's usually extremely toxic and usually death is pretty certain with that. Uh, and so, again, treat it, the arrhythmia is occurred under your ACLS protocols just like you would any other. Uh, your metals. Um, these guys, again, lead, arsenic, mercury, uh, again, not as common as we had it years past, but again, especially your older buildings that have still have lead pipes in them, that would be an example there. Uh, again, iron, again, there's only so much, you, you, you know, the multivitamin with the iron. Yeah, but if you de you take excessive amounts of it and you take it via the multivitamin, and uh, again, you can actually, uh, you can possibly go into shock from the hemorrhage, and, and that's the biggest thing is it starts causing GI bleeding, okay? Uh, again, visible tablets or concentrations in the stomach or small intestine, the x-ray, yes, they can actually pick this up on that if they have taken that many. So vomiting diarrhea is the big one. Uh, they will they'll eventually go into liver failure. And again, that same thing with the acetaminophen overdose, apply it here. Uh, again, this is, that's a good example of a toxidrome itself that, that causes the liver failure, which causes the, the confusion, the weakness, the staggering, the, the bleeding. Okay, and eventually it will cause bowel scarring and it will and can cause possible obstructions. Uh, again, uh, a, 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 a clonating agent like a def defraxamine might be used, eh, usually, but again, this is going to be done at the hospital, something that we're not going to do in the field. Now, lead, again, is used in the glazes and paints uh, back in the older, you know, uh, several, you know, several decades ago. Most of these are no longer uh, mercury. The only the, the thermometers and temperature switches, I know that you carry uh, that. Um, uh, and again, it, 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 they're sealed in the glass, so you don't want to get this stuff on you, by the way. And the chronic exposures can happen to both metals, okay? So again, usually headache, irritability, confusion, abdominal pain, and uh, 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 memory disturbances is from your lead. Again, these are the kids that are, you know, they were doing okay till they moved to this new place, and now, you know, the kid can't focus, uh, you know, very agitated. Uh, and again, they, they go to stay at grandma's for two weeks, and all of a sudden they get better, and then they come back home, and they're doing worse. Um, the, again, this is where good history taking comes into play, okay? Um, and again, they do have agents that can bind to these, uh, but again, that's probably going to be done at the hospital. Some of the things to look for here. This animation shows the many environmental sources of lead and the ways in which lead may enter the child's body. As we zoom to the insider's view, we see the portals of entry for lead and its ultimate storage site in bone, teeth, and hair. Lead exacts its toxic effects through all body systems, but especially the brain, where it poisons key sulfhydryl enzymes. Two principal modalities of treatment involve chelation therapy, namely BAL, British anti-leucocyte or dimercaprol injections, or oral DMSA, succimer or dimercaptosuccinic acid. You guys don't need to know that, okay? Maybe for a quiz question, maybe, possibly, probably not, all right? Uh, but again, the biggest thing is, is when you're in the home environment, and especially, this really does affect the littler kids on that. Uh, contaminated food, yay! We all love that when we get that. Uh, again, it, it, there's usually some sort of bacterial exotoxin. Uh, again, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, throwing up, the 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 screaming craps. Uh, again, these are severe respiratory distress. It can actually lead to uh, respiratory arrest, actually, depending on the on the toxic uh, the the toxin that's involved, uh, botulism. Seafood poisoning is, again, uh, usually contaminated shellfish, clams, mussels, and uh, you can have a paralytic shellfish uh, poisoning syndrome, and they can actually go into respiratory arrest from this. 
Uh, again, your seafood from a reputable source is wonderful. Uh, Citradera is a bony fish, uh, and as scromboids is histamine poisoning our common gastrointestinal uh, systems with this. Um, and again, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and facial flushing, especially with um, a red tide incident as well. You can you can have these poisons introduced into the patients. Uh, again, food poisoning is fairly rarely life threatening, but boy, it's just freaking miserable. Okay. Uh, again, performing a necessary assessment uh, if you can possibly get. And one of the things I would say with contaminated food. Um, if you start going to three or four calls and they all went to the same place to eat, start putting the two and two together. You might not be able to put it together, but again, you know, hey, you know, we went to um, Howard Johnson's and ate dinner. Okay, or, or we went to, Cap I'm going to use Cracker Barrel. We went to Cracker Barrel and now they're throwing up. And then they go to the next one. Yeah, we just got finished eating. Yeah, we were at Cracker Barrel. Uh, we get to the third call and you get to the hospital. Yeah, this, this guy just ate at Cracker Barrel. That's a warning. Okay, make sure that the docs know about that. Okay, yes, it can be. Uh, again, we call, you might not be able to put those pieces together uh, separately, but but you can put them together once you get to the hospital and go, hey, you know, this is, you know, hey, doc, uh, we, we should probably know about this. Again, uh, for uh, your contaminated food, again, O2, IV assistance, uh, consider antihistamines, antiemetic drugs is probably your way to go. Uh, poisonous plants and mushrooms. If possible, let's try to find, um, what it was that they actually got into, okay? Try to find a full stem or a leaf or flower. Uh, again, examine the patient's mouth for redness, blistering edema, because yes, there are toxic plants out there. Uh, mushrooms, again, these are, uh, the edible mushrooms. They do so to, uh, uh gain a euphoric state. Uh, but yeah, there are some of them that are actually deadly, uh, and again, uh, they're trying, basically they're trying to get high, but again, 90% of all deaths are due to probably three or four mushrooms because you incorrectly the, differentiated between the ones that are, that are, um, that are going to make you feel good. And these, by the way, would be ones that make you feel bad. All right. So again, the, the Aminella mushrooms. And so again, if you don't know your mushrooms, uh, again, and it can cause major problems for you. Um, so again, some of the signs and symptoms of the poisonous plant. Uh, again, a lot of these, if you notice, are a lot of your um, sludgeum uh, events, okay? Because it works on that same principle, okay? And if it, you do have that, again, try to figure out what it is that the patient took, and then again, uh, and make yourself you make the, sure that they in for that that they remove themselves from a in, make sure get rid of all that other stuff. We're going to start on this next slide on the next video, and we will see you then.